It was now a game of cat and mouse. The cat, the tiger, prowling along the treetops, and our little Rex, the rat, cowering beneath the canopy. The blast of rotors behind us, we made a final charge for the summit. Then something completely unexpected, clear skies. Had we escaped the eye of the tiger? Aha! Good job, battle captain. I reckon we've lost them. I'm pretty happy with that. I, I, well, I can't believe it. That's the most extraordinary thing. So you're clever driving through the trees, and your dust storm. I did a pretty damn good job. Look at this, how beautiful it is. Man. I'm glad the army prevailed. I'd hate to think of you two being our last line of defence. Well, I thought I did all right, considering, you know, I was sort of doing things in the Anzac tradition, or maybe the Charge of the Light Brigade, at least, anyway. So. But how did you find all the new technology with a machine like that? Well, the dip's really good, Not and you, I'm uh, talking to him, the pilot, Captain Hamish Felton Taylor. <laughs> It must have been good practice, at least, chasing these loonies around in Oh, this. look, Charlie, Army's always looking for volunteers for mobile targets. And I <laughs> what were you doing, picking him as your navigator? Well, I figured that if we didn't know where the hell we were going, they wouldn't know where to look for us. Well, you <laughs> did you know where he was going? We thought we were going to catch them or lose them there at one stage, but uh, then we realised they were lost again and they were actually trying to look for the right track. See? There's method in my madness. But chasing this thing around the WRX, useful practice. Oh, great training benefit for us, actually, Charlie. It was good fun. Good well, fun. there you go. Great news. We're in good shape. Should the Japanese start raining WRXs down on Darwin, <laughs> we've actually got it covered. Captain Hamish Felton Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> After the break, petrol versus diesel, and who can waste the most fast? <laughs> Warren and I decided to play a few holes of golf, so we got two VW golfs and burnt some holes in the ozone layer. The basic premise is a fuel challenge. Two VW Golfs, diesel versus petrol. And we have to drive from Sydney to Wollongong with some fuel sucking challenges along the way. It's obvious to me that diesels are the way to go, but of course, Charlie disagrees. I've chosen the petrol car, the FSI Pacific, because it has direct injection, which hopefully will help fuel economy. It's got 110 kilowatts of power and 200 newton meters of torque. I'm driving the Golf Pacific TDI, the diesel version. I have less power, but only just at 103 kilowatts. But I have heaps more torque with 320 newton metres. So I'll have to tread lightly on the pedal or I'll lose all my juice and acceleration. Mate, I'm five cents a litre in front of you already. This yeah. fuel's so much cheaper. Yeah, but Charlie, the day is young. I mean, don't forget, by the end of the day, I'll be well in front. Mate, the day is long. By the end of the day, you'll be so far behind, lugging along that little diesel. You won't see me for dust. This is not like some old bus. It isn't like a double-decker bus. Diesel's a cracker jack nowadays. Sure. You watch. The four-cylinder automatic. One of the world's great gifts to motoring. I do like this little car, but then again, I do like diesels. I like petrol motors. I like revs and horsepower. Warren, oh, he's a diesel kind of guy. Just kind of looks diesel. Rudolph Diesel would be very, very happy to see all his work culminate in a little car like this. 
There are only three things you can be certain of in life. Death, taxes and tolls. We got any e-tags in these things? Uh, mate, there are no e-tags in here um, and I don't have any cash either. Uh, don't worry mate, I got cash, I'll pay for you. What a very kind gent you are, Charlie. Thanks mate, very kind. Well, there might only be three certainties in life, but I can tell you for nothing, helping out Warren the Practical Joker ain't one of them. It's payback time. Thanks, mate. Come on, Charlie. Thanks, mate. Have a good one. Nope. <laughs> That's the wrong window. <laughs> Thanks, mate. He paid for me. The guy, did he, did he not pay for me? Cruel, I know. But the longer he's held up there, trying to get through the toll, the more fuel he's going to get. Not pay for me. You just can't argue with these people. But luckily, the bloke recognised me off the telly. I think it works for a top of <laughs> Oh, I am sorry. He's still there. After using my celebrity appeal to get out of jail, I was a free man. I will kill him. Thanks a lot. Charlie, you mongrel! Stitch me right up! Just think of how much fuel you used idling away explaining yourself, mate. Charlie! The fight was turning out to be anything but fair. The first challenge was to level the playing field. There is only one man with the correct qualifications for this particular test. And it isn't you. Some say he gargles every morning with diesel. Others say he uses petrol for cologne. All we know is, he's the stick. Now that is petrol power. Oh, look at that. That's fair. Look at that. It's nimble as you like. Well, it should be. Come on, boy. Oh. 2368. 2368. OK, so now it's my little diesel gun. He's off. Oh. Oh, the smoke! <laughs> Come on, son. Whoa, he's giving it some. What do you get? I don't believe it. 21. Woo! Seven. What? <laughs> oh, that's worse than losing. That's fantastic. That means that the diesel is faster than the petrol car. Mate, this is about economy, not speed. Wait a minute. It was definitely time to move on. With just under 50 clicks on the trip meter, the needle hadn't really moved much. We came up with a concrete plan to make these things drink a bit faster. A 400 kilo plan. It's going to be like a full load of passengers. Talk about a dog on lino, mate. We'll be lucky the front wheels are on the ground. Hey, Charlie. Yes, mate. If someone asks you your golf handicap, you can say 400 kilos. I'd say it was you, actually. You idiot. <laughs> With the weight of the boot around our ankles like a full nappy, we had still managed to travel 130 kilometres. Charlie was chewing through the fuel and the stress was getting to him. Maybe a minute, mate. So during a pit stop, I thought I'd help by reducing some of the pressure. Lower tyre pressure equals higher fuel consumption, which equals revenge. Very good. That's better. Good, good, mate. Yeah. The next challenge would really seek to sap the source. How much fuel have you gone through? Oh, a quarter of a tank already. Oh, it's music to my ears, Charlie. Call us crazy, but in the name of science, we've decided to drive down, turn around and then head back up one of the steepest stretches of road along the south coast, the notorious Bulleye Pass. Loaded up with 400 kilos of cement is one thing, but for some real fuel liposuction, you've got to get creative. So, windows down, and air conditioning switch to Antarctic. Come on, little car. I'm freezing to death. This is freezing. It's your stupid idea, 